and welcome to Critical Strike. I'm Josh, and here with me is Bill. Hi. And Kyle. Hi. Kyle's sitting on a new chair. Yeah, like a like a big person. I got a fancy computer <laughs> chair. I has a big boy chair. It's got like ergonomics and like four different levers. Did, really? did you get one of those like uh, DX racers that all the kids on Twitch need now? No, I I just got like a a well ventilated chair with uh, Vent- like lumbar ventilated. support and <laughs> bullshit like that. Oh, you got I know I know kind of chair. Okay. Do you know what uh, those like DX racers that I'm talking about? Though I imagine because they're called racers, they look very similar to a racing car chair. Yeah, yeah, in a way, yeah, but, like, all the big Twitch streamers need them because, like, it's a status symbol. And there was, like, a big a big controversy lately because a kid photoshopped in his stream that he had a DX Racer chair, but he can't afford one. That's really sad, kind of. Oh, shit. So that's the equivalent of, like, <clears throat> rims for Twitch streamers? Pretty much. Oh man, check out these spinners. Except I'm a computer. <laughs> I, I play video games. So check. I got fucking dubs. Check, check out my oh, computer God. chair that I sit on. What? What? My dubs. The whistle goes. Whoa. Still, one of my favorite things when I see people that still buy rims in 2016 are the ones and the people that have rims that are easily worth more than the car itself. Oh, that's yeah. the best. That is my, my favorite. My personal favorite is the rims on the minivan. Oh god, I don't know if I've ever seen that. Dude, you you have not truly lived until you've seen rims on a minivan. I, like they can't be very big cuz there's not a wheel well to support a hell of a lot, right? Hmm. Right? See, that's why it's a lifted oh, minivan Jesus. with rims. Jesus. I mean, whatever floats your boat, I guess, but I uh, that that could have been money spent elsewhere, like literally almost anything you could I, have bought. I think I can say in my personal life, I haven't known anyone to buy rims since I was maybe twenty, twenty-one. I think it would be acceptable if you had like an old car you were fixing up and you just had to actually replace the wheels, but I I don't know anyone that's that's done that. I, I know I I've known zero people who have gone out and purposely purchased new rims for cosmetic uh, purchases. Don't don't you want dubs, No, I don't don't even know what dubs are. Is it like dubstep? I don't know. No. I think it's a brand of rims. Is it a size or is it a brand? No, it's a a size. Here at Critical Strike, Uh, we're very knowledgeable of pop culture. Mm. I I I mean, Nancy's car has like 21-inch rims, and I don't think that's dubs. I think dubs are like 22s. Oh. Well, hers are around there. I just know because it's a fucking pain in the ass to buy tires for her because they're super expensive. Oh, I'm in there because they're proper low pros too. Mine yeah, classifies they're... low pro, but those are proper. Yeah. And it's like, oh, they have to be like, oh, they have to be this specification and they need to like these specific qualifications for the tire. Oh, well, she does drive a race car. So yeah, she does. I was about to say if, if anybody wants to send me some uh, some rims for my race car bed, I would appreciate it. <laughs> would your roommates mind? <laughs> yeah, no, they'd love it. I should watch that movie. It's delightful. There he is in his fucking race car bed. What are we doing with our life? I'm gonna get a CB radio to talk to other car beds. You, you, you're talking to like the six year old next door. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> Mommy, neighbor Josh taught me the word cunt. Yeah. <laughs> That's right where I was going with that. <laughs> Mommy, I learned a new word today. Hello and welcome to Critical Strike in my race car bed. Uh, I am Josh. Oh. Breaker Breaker 20. Breaker Breaker 219. I mean, the best part about you actually having a race car bed would be you not fitting in the race car bed and just like <laughs> limbs and and things just off of it onto the floor. As is right now, like pretty much 
from my calf down is off my bed every night. <laughs> what? Yeah. For- Why don't you get a proper bed? Wait, I mean, are you are you being facetious and joking about having a race car bed, or the actual bed you have isn't a grown up bed and you don't fit in it? What kind of bed do you have? Uh, it's a full. A full? Yeah. I don't like big. I I don't typically sleep on the bed, anyways. What do you sleep in a coffin? What are you talking about? What? Yeah, what do you sleep? A lot of times I'll sleep on the floor. What? Because you don't fit in your bed, what? maybe. No, because it's more comfortable. What? Were you held in captivity? How awful is your bed that the floor is Why more are comfortable? both of you yelling at me? What are you... Because t- it doesn't make We're fucking mammals. sense. We're mammals. We nest and make beds. Because... You just casually <laughs> lay yeah. them out. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna carry some straw up to my room with my mouth and put it down on the floor. <laughs> no, I mean, and make a nest. D- don't don't mind me, uh, son. Do you have a horse? <laughs> no, it's just making yeah. my bed. So, like, basically, what you're saying is the transition to homelessness really not that far of a jump for you. I mean, no. you don't get cold, you wear shorts, you eat your food cold and sitting about anyway, and you don't sleep in a bed, like, you already have one foot out the door. You may as well just give up all that sweet laser money and just fucking head for a bridge, bro. <laughs> I mean, I sleep in it a lot. It's just, like, at some point in the night, I kind of pull myself down at some point, so my leg hang- hangs down. I don't know why. <laughs> But I am too long for the bed. <laughs> Have you tried sleeping diagonally? No, that would be weird. Well, that's the only way you'll fit on the bed. Jesus Christ. Like, Kyle, you when, we went, when we went to Fun Spot together, like, I am too long for the beds up there, too. You're like, it's like you have PST and you're back from the war and you just can't get comfortable unless you're on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> oh... I like sleeping on the floor. I kind of want to start a Kickstarter to get Josh a bed that fits. He needs a Cal, dude. He needs a fucking California king bed, like yeah. Shaquille like, O'Neal. Maybe have you really? I mean, honestly, this is a real question, now, not just a joke. Have you just thought about maybe your bed isn't comfortable and not good, and you just need to get something better? Oh yeah, definitely. I've definitely thought about that. But here's you the thing: you just Bill? blew a bunch of money on a on a pro like bed. Where you sleep and spend half your life. No, I don't Wait, sleep that much, remember? you spend 12 hours sleeping, Bill? Well, I just assume he spends a lot of time laying about. I only sleep like six <laughs> hours a night myself. Liter- but... Yeah, he just he just spends hibernating. Yeah. I mean, I, I average he about... burrows into the mattress. <laughs> That's why it's uncomfortable, because there's a giant fucking <laughs> hole in it from him burrowing into it. I average about four hours of sleep a night. You can just see him rotating around it like a dog at night. <laughs> Scratching at like it. Like kicking. <laughs> well, that's oh. where he keeps his straw in the hollow of the bed. So he, he burrows in there and he's got all oh. the straw that he just kind of like makes some sort of Josh nest. Oh, God. Yes, though, you should really just go to the mattress store and just try some shit. It's... No, I don't want to spend any money. But... Oh, never mind. I'm just going to put this on the list of Josh things. You know, like the teenage girls, they have those little posts that say, like, just girl things. This goes on to one of those just Josh things. Oh. <laughs> I don't see what the big like, deal is. Personally. What do you use on the floor then? You just, like, throw over, you know, like a bear pelt and sleep on, like, a rock for your pillow? Like, yeah. You yep. know those like gym mats that you could buy at like Costco or, or like a hardware uh, store? He he's just got like three layers of that. <laughs> no, I I legit like I put Actually, a blanket that would down. Probably be pretty comfortable. I put a blanket down on the hardwood floor and I sleep on that. Oh Jesus, it's a hardwood floor. Yeah. How is your back not fucked well, up? Well, shouldn't it, it? His back's really better than any of ours for sleeping on the floor if he actually lays flat. But yes. Yeah. That. I mean. You're like a Klingon. They just sleep on steel. You could you could probably get a bed made. I could I could make you a steel bed and ship it to you. Okay. The, sh- the shipping cost alone would be literally twice as much as buying Josh buying a bed that would fit him. Yeah, but I would also be building Josh a steel bed. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I'm sorry, Bill. The logistics of that actually getting into his house I, I just I can't I can't Kyle, of course, of not, course. No, logistics, I, I, would, the logistics. I would design it so that it came apart Kyle you just split the sleeping area in half 
that would fold up. That would does not compute. That would fall into does some sort compute. of angle frame that would be bolted does around the perimeter. Compute. I'd have maybe probably some four by four columns, maybe six by six tubes, just to kind of give it a a rougher, manlier look. And yeah, I could make this happen. This, this is uh, Bill. There's something you're not uh, you're not taking into consideration. Mm. Josh sleeps on hard wood, not steel. Yeah. I'm sure that has a completely different feel. Yes, it'd be cooler. It'd be more like his home environment. <laughs> <laughs> he grunts, but he's like, you know, that wouldn't be so bad. Are you going to provide him with, like, a half a ton of straw so he could make, like, a proper nest out of it? I, I could. Like, a couple bales? A couple, uh... I'm sure his... I don't know how straws quantified in groups uh, wheels I don't know but I'm sure his straw guy could hook us up <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was interesting to learn about you Josh I, you guys have known for a long time that I don't always sleep in my bed no, no. That is, Josh I've known you for like 13 years that is the first time I've heard yeah. that no I've mentioned yeah, I've definitely no, mentioned it before no Josh that is something that I, I would have remembered like I, I think I've mentioned to Nance often like there's times where I won't make it to my bed yeah, me too. I I pass yeah. out on the couch. Yeah, that that's what we've all assumed. Not like, oh, it's the bed is simply too far, two feet away, so I'm just gonna fall asleep <laughs> like, on the floor. I can just see him <laughs> like a drunk. Just see him in his chair, and he rotates it around, looks at the bed, looks at the floor, looks at the bed, looks at the floor, and then just kind of like shuts his body off and just bleh, onto the floor, <laughs> yeah, <he> flops <laughs> off the floor. <laughs> There's like dust falls from the ceiling on the like from the on the floor below, and people are like, "Oh, Josh is going to sleep again." All right, when I'm, when I'm done with this, I'm going to figure out what the actual size of this bed is because I actually don't. I'm going to guess if, if you if said it's a, full. If it's a full size bed, dude, it's That's um, tiny. It's probably like five by seven. I mean, mm, it it's not even. That. Maybe it's a twin. No, but it's a twin. Josh, if you were to lay on your bed and outstretch your arms, how I like how much is how much I don't know, it's right next to a wall. Okay. If you were to do what I said, outstretch your arms and when you lay down, outstretch your arms. How much space is left? Like how much do your arms hang over? I have no idea, man. How do you not know that? <laughs> Do I just lay in bed and stretch my arms out? No, I don't. I do that all the time. I don't. Like, when I wake up, that is one of the first things I do is like, f- like whip my arms out. Yeah, I don't. I Unfortunately, w- I've hit Nance a couple of times doing that, but still. <clears throat> that is not something I do when I get in bed. Huh. Well, to be fair, you probably don't remember very often, so. Because hmm. <laughs> you're a drunk who sleeps on the floor. Yeah. You know, because I, I haven't had any alcohol in fucking months, but... Well, old habits die uh, hard, Josh. I'm on my second glass of Jameson. This is going to be I'm, quite the night. I'm drinking coffee. I had a coffee as well. Mm. Great. Way to make me seem like an al- alcoholic. Oh, no, I, I have oh, a... No, I have a, drinking in solidarity. I have a Maker's Mark in San Pellegrino right now. I just also had no, a coffee. No, I mean, if... if Huh. If you want to hear an alcoholic, you listen to the last episode. I've got Jameson and uh, seltzer water. Yeah, I was a little like... shit can last episode. That was my bad. That was my bad. So now that we've officially like dug into my sleeping habits. Um... Tune in next week when we learn about Josh's hatred of shavers. Yeah, I, I got to say, now that I'm running, I sleep fucking fantastic now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, like, I'm I just sleep. Out, when... Especially with the, uh, the addition of the hot tub. Yep. I sleep horrible. I get like four hours of sleep a night. Yeah, when you actually have a proper workout scheme, you sleep ten times better. I used to get these things like a sleep hangover. Like if I slept <laughs> like more than six hours, I'd wake up with like an awful headache, but I don't get that anymore. Body's rebuilding itself. You're a runner now. <laughs> well, let's so this is actually Well, you. no, no, let's not talk about him being a runner quick. Before because we should probably move this along. But let's talk about the fact that you now <laughs> are often in Probably most likely all the times at home, walking around in a robe with your gold chain, because you're now a hot tub person. Yeah, it's uh, so it, it being you know the the holiday season and people make ba- like not bad purchases, but like the big purchase that they've made. Uh, I finally gave in to Nancy's desire to owning a hot tub. So I gave in to Nancy's desire. 
years. Well, it's for as it for as long as I've known her, she's been like, I want a hot tub. I want a hot tub. Twelve years of that, Josh. Twelve long years of I want a hot tub. It got worse when we got the houses. All right, we got a house. Doesn't matter. Let's get the hot tub. Let's get the hot tub over and over yeah. and over again. What about when I said for thirteen years, Kyle, I want a bed. You have a bed. Oh yeah. <laughs> so black or er, Cyber Monday, Rance saw on Amazon that there was an inflatable hot tub sale. So she just sent the link, and I was like, "Fine, fine, do it." And I have to say, she was right. You know, you you had this amazing anniversary dinner, and now you you got her a hot tub. I'm I'm curious what the Kyle purchase that's inevitably coming is going to be. She got herself a hot tub. Ah, okay. well, I guess she got us a hot tub. I don't know. Mine, I guess my purchase was this chair. Mm. I went through my um my discretionary funds for the month, and I was like, I need a new chair. Quite, I have Kyle to say, lives a simple life. Pretty happy about this chair. It's pretty comfortable. Is my lower back is supported. It's at a proper height off the ground. My arms are at a comfortable distance away from my body. <laughs> got neck. I got like a neck rest. It's fucking great. Yeah, that's that's actually both of you finally have office chairs now in the last couple months. It's interesting. Wait. Josh didn't have an office chair? I had always assumed he He sat on a fucking fold-up chair. You know when we sit on Skype Ah. for hours and don't do fuck all, and I'm laying in a couch or like this big poofy leather chair I'm sitting in right now? He was just on a plank of metal and some amount of fabric. No, 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 no. You were on a a fucking... Really? I was on a wooden kitchen chair. Oh, sorry. My mistake. So was I. So was I. Oh, God. I was on a uh, a wooden kitchen chair with like a rolled up blanket so my back wouldn't melt. Yeah, see I didn't have that. I just had the chair. Well, you should try getting hit by a car a couple of, a couple of times then uh your back You should don't try work sleeping on good. a hardwood floor. I think I'll be I've done it. Don't like I'll it. I'll be okay without that one, I think. I got I got like a real nice bed and a bunch of down comforters right now. One of those memory foam pillows. It's, it's like sleeping in a a pocket of awesome. Pretty happy. I've I've got one of those. It's a foam pillow that always stays cold. It's awesome. Yeah, mine's ventilated. It it never gets gross. Even in the summer, it didn't. It was pretty great. Yeah, that was I think Nance's Christmas gift two years ago. Big fan of that one. Except when it 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 ha, it can freeze solid which I learned when I went up to Connecticut with uh, my pillow in the trunk so like I grabbed it threw it on the bed went to go lay down it was like headbutting a essentially a block of ice you were the only fucking person in existence that could hurt himself laying on a pillow amazing you know what that is the exact same thing Nancy said as that and then that was before she said that before she laughed at me for like five minutes. <laughs> Do we have any other weird household items or sleeping habits we want to discuss before we actually talk about what we're supposed to be talking yeah, about? Yeah, seriously. Do you, do you no, want me to go through I, how no, I dry no. myself <laughs> in the shower and how if I make a mistake or that lose grip of the towel, I kind of have to start over because it just won't be right otherwise? <laughs> that's obs- just jumps back <laughs> in the that's shower. obsessive compulsive behavior. You might want to take a pill for that. Nah. It works out for most things. Oh, I didn't get this nut properly. Time to get back in. Because <clears throat> you, you do it proper top down, right? Well, yeah. But, you know, if if okay. something gets broken or, like, maybe I'm hung over on a Saturday morning and I get confused, I just kind of stand there and go, what was I? Where am I? Doing? Where was? Uh, shit, I'll just start over. How do you get confused? Well, like if you're whipping the towel around to the backside of you and you, you know, you're, you're drying your back and then it lets loose and then it like slops on the ground a little bit in the shower. And then you just kind of stand there like, what the fuck do I do now? Like, where was I? I'm like, eh. Wait, you dry yourself off in the shower? Yeah, I don't get out and drip everywhere. I'm not sort of bath mat is for. What? I don't shower like a peasant. Wait, Kyle. do you not have a bath mat in your bathroom? No. What? I get out stepping onto the towel where I finish off calf down. I mean, there's like uh, the 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 rug thing in front of the toilet and like the memory foam one in front of the vanity, but like uh, yeah, like right in front of the shower exit, I, I don't have one. 
because I don't get out sopping wet. It's, Weird. It's cold out there, Kyle. It's very warm inside the uh, the sealed shower area, and I don't want to step out there sopping wet. Yeah, it's it's all about the bracing nature of stepping. It's it's about the 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 uh, the contrast from like the hot steamy shower to the cool bathroom. No, I have a seat in my shower. Uh, I, I I can just sit all there right. and warm up. No, yeah, we'll, <clears throat> we'll we'll discuss that next week. I'll, t- I'll take a video. Why don't, why don't you do the listener questions and comments? Okay. We'll start with Outlaw's favorite Christmas movie. Gremlins. Hands down, Gremlins. Really? Yeah. Gremlins? I love that movie. Gremlins. That's your go-to Christmas movie? Actually, yes, it the is. The snow is coming down. You're eating some sort of elaborate meal around Christmas time. Lights, music, the whole spiel. And you're like, you know what? I would like to watch small reptilian type monsters <laughs> fuck things up. Yep. You know, Gremlins is a good Christmas movie. Uh, Gremlins is number one. Uh, you know what? You know what, Bill? You're right. It's a tie. It's a tie <clears throat> between Gremlins and a Christmas toy, or rather, the Christmas toy. What's that? It's a Jim Henson movie. I don't know if I know uh, that one. Rugby the Tiger Cub, and uh, it's basically uh, the precursor to Toy Story. So it's hmm. all these huh. toys around Christmas getting worried about how they're going to get replaced. So the toys launch an expedition to see who's like who's going to be the new toy and all that. Kind of feel like I might want to watch that. It's actually if if you can get the proper one with the introduction with Kermit the Frog, hmm. it's it's really good. Interesting. Like there's a really heart like there's a really like sweet song in there that like <clears throat> kind of brings a tear to your eye. Yeah, I, I don't know if I've ever seen that. I mean, maybe if I look it up later, I'll go. Oh, I guess I have. But off the top of my head, I don't think I've seen that one. Huh. So don't confuse it with the Muppet Christmas, where it's like all the different Muppet characters no, no, and like. I won't. Uh, like a cabin in the middle of the woods in winter. <clears throat> I will not. Make this that one mistake. is specifically about toys. Hmm. Uh, there was actually a cartoon about it, uh, Secret Life of Toys, that went for like six episodes before it was canceled. Interesting. Huh. Yeah. Josh, can we just assume you don't have one? I actually do ish. It's. If you don't say what I'm thinking you're going to say, I'm going to call you a liar, so tread carefully. <laughs> what the? So wait, even though it's my favorite Christmas movie, you're going to tell me that my favorite Christmas movie is wrong. I just know that you've expressed interest and admiration for a certain Christmas movie, so if you say something else and say there's nothing else, I'm going to call you a liar. Like are you his, saying- his favorite movie is Will Vinton's Claymation Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Are you thinking Die Hard, Bill? No. Okay. Well, there's technically there's two for me. Okay. Um, there's one when I was a little kid that I actually really, really loved. I haven't seen it in years, but I do hold it. In oh, I know what it is. What? It's. I'm going to let you say yeah. it. All right. I don't I'm think you know what it is. I don't think way. either of you have actually ever even seen this. No, that's fine. Um, but like I said, I haven't seen it in a long time, but I've always hold it. It's weird because like, I never actually say anything positive about anything. But, uh, I feel like we should have some music cut over this, you know, like the sad piano-ish uh, type stuff, because you're opening up a little yeah, if, bit. If, if I know Josh, it's gonna it's not going to be piano music. I believe it's going to be jug music. Yep, that's where I'm going, Kyle. So, the movie that I was actually thinking of, the first one is uh, Santa Claus the Movie. I own that on Amazon. It's in my top five. Well, the Dudley Moore one? Yeah. Okay. I fucking love that movie. Okay, it's, so that is. Oh, I was like the the Tim the Toolman Taylor one. No, 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 no see, no. see, that's the the only difference is the word the one has it and one doesn't. Yeah, that's the copyright difference. The so Santa that... Claus versus Santa Claus. Yep. Yep. The Dudley Moore one is one of my all time favorites. I saw that in the theater as a child. I love that fucking movie. Yeah, that's that, that's probably my four my three. The other one is uh, Emmett Otter, Joe yeah. Band's Christmas. Yeah, that's what I was hoping you'd say. I don't think I've actually seen the the Santa Claus. The, I, I don't believe I've seen Santa Claus, the the movie. It's, it has, uh, 
What's it? Who's the other big actor that's in it, Bill? He was in um Harry on, and the Hendersons. Yeah, and was Third it Rock. David Huddleston? No, he's on Third Rock. He was the dad in Third Rock. He's the dad in Henry and the Hendersons. He was a serious John Lithgow. Yeah, John yeah, Lithgow. Yeah, he's in that as well. He's the baddie. It. Uh, I like John Lithgow as the villain. He plays a good villain. Kyle, I will. I will consider seeing if I can send you that through Amazon as like a Christmas gift. I don't know if you could enjoy it without having it being part of your childhood. But it's so weird and unique and different. It kind of pisses me off that it doesn't get played all the time this time of year. Like, it doesn't get played anywhere. It's, I love it. It's like, it's, yeah, it's part of my Christmas rotation. I'll watch it probably three times in the next few weeks. You wouldn't have expected me to say that, huh? Not at all, no. No, not not at all. I love that movie, though. See that? Old Hardwood Floor has got some surprises, motherfucker. All right, what's yours? Uh, I that one is right there for me. Uh, a Christmas Story gets played twenty five hours a day on Christmas, so I don't really watch it at all during the season. So I ruled that out. I don't like that movie. I'll be honest, I don't like it. It's just part of you know Christmas for me. It's just it's not Christmas without seeing it at least a couple times. But I, I gotta go with Christmas Vacation, hands down. I, I figured you were gonna say that. I never ever get tired of it. There's so many things I love about that movie. I just. I've watched it twice already. Maybe three I'm a times. big fan of the the saucer sledding, just because that was very reminiscent of what happened to us <laughs> really? when, when we went sledding down the mountain. <laughs> really? By my house, yeah. You sprayed Pam on your saucer? <laughs> well, we didn't spray Pam, but like we would like at, at do attempts to like grease it up to go faster. Yeah, I did. And then inevitably, that. one of us would either slam into like the metal barricade that's beneath the the mountain or run into a tree. Yep, I've done that. Yeah, being from the Great Plains, that's not... Like, sledding isn't uh, such a big part of winter for us. I mean, there are certain areas people go and whatnot, but it's... I don't think it's anything like what you guys would would have been brought up with. <clears throat> yeah, we don't take your... We don't take kindly to your pansy hills where we come from. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, I, I wouldn't insult the art of sledding by saying we do anything of the sort out here. And every every like uh, December, Bill sends me that fucking Christmas song that plays in that movie that he likes. Melakaliki Laka? Every fucking year I get that in my Spotify message. It's the thing to say on this bright Hawaiian day, Josh. Oh, is Hold on, I need to check if the if the, uh, the Christmas toy song is on uh, Spotify. Mm, possibly, because I'm I I will honestly might cry if I hear it. The thing I would say about Christmas Vacation before we move on is for those of you that maybe only watch it on fucking ABC Family or whatever it is, I think they cut out the part where the kids are going to stay inside of the Griswolds and. Uh, Eddie's outside and he says, don't forget the rubber sheets and gerbils, which is one of the most fucked up things ever said in a movie. And it's in a Christmas movie and they slip it in and most people don't catch it. But clearly, Eddie likes gerbils up the ass and doesn't want to make a mess in his camper. Right. Like, it's such a, like, (laughs) most people overlook it. Like, it just doesn't register, you know. But it's really, really fucked up. Really fucked up. And it's in a Christmas movie that's shown... All season, every year. Nope, it is not on Spotify. Drag. <clears throat> uh, next question, St. Lee Stewart. What do you hope is in your stocking? I think before we answer this, we have to say, is the stocking like part of your guys' tradition? Does that like a thing for you guys? Because I think different families have different traditions where, I mean, I did as a kid, but it was mostly like knickknack stuff, you know? And now as an adult, it's... My mom just like puts the stocking on top of a box and she makes these, she calls them like annual survival kits and it's full of like toiletries and canned soups and shavers and like all of that kind of stuff that she knows that no one wants to buy. So she just buys me a bunch of it each year. Like (laughs) that's what my stockings become. (laughs) It's, it's, we have like, I honestly have a similar thing when we had we when we did stockings it was always um necessities mm-hmm. so it was things that you would need that you wouldn't know like you would normally you wouldn't normally go out and get for yourself yep. and Nancy's family is the same way so it was it, it was a nice 
um, kind of uh, thing that we had growing up together. So mine is usually filled with like antacids and things like that. <laughs> That's up your mine's, ass. Mine's kind of similar <laughs> where we do uh, like as you as I was growing up, it changed into kind of necessities like that as well. Like there would be like cologne in it and stuff like that oh, as I'm you're, growing up. Are you a cool water cologne kind of guy, Josh? No. <laughs> no. No, just curious. What's in it now? Same kind of stuff? Yeah, typically like cologne or uh, there's some candies or stuff, but it's kind of grown into the uh, like the Amazon gift card holder. Ah. <laughs> yeah, but it's, I mean, it's kind of neat that all of us do that because I, I do know people that like the stocking is just something that maybe is about as a decoration but it plays no part of actual gift giving in any way to a lot of people which always seems weird to me no the the stocking for us was always the it was what you looked through first and then the gifts would go around yeah yep uh as far as what would i actually hope that's in there this year as i well, now as I put on uh, Twitter, what I sent her for a Christmas list was just a picture of a bottle of Laphroaig and dress socks. So I just more dress socks. That's it. I don't think I own any dress socks. I'm surprised you wear, even have shoes. Quite frankly, Josh, I have two neat rows in my top drawer that I have. One is black and one is brown. Yeah, see, I just uh, wear dress socks. short white socks. A, the fact you even own white socks is weird. Yeah, dude, black black socks. <clears throat> All of black my socks, socks are black or colored. Yeah, I don't. Oh, I have like two pair of uh, uh, white socks from when I was much younger that I just keep because I, I couldn't tell you the last time I've worn a white sock though. I have white socks that I only use when I run. I use the short black ones and gray ones when I run. I've got a mix of black and white. Yeah. No, I have an entire drawer of dress socks. I bet you there's probably ooh, 25, 30 pair that are unused. And then when I get a new stock every Christmas, I throw out older ones and break new ones in. I have a lot of dress socks for some reason. You can understand. I use mine constantly. Hmm? It, it, it's difficult for me to get socks, too. So. No, it's not. You could go have them in 12 minutes from now. No, specific size, Bill. Sock. Jo- like sock Bill, size? He has special feet. Oh, your special needs. They do make socks in sizes, Josh. It is difficult for me to find the socks in the size that I need, is what I'm saying. How high- Are you like a knee-high guy? That would make me so happy if you no, were a knee-high like, guy. To find size, <laughs> like socks for size 18 is kind of a pain Holy in the ass. Holy fuck, dude. Are they- That's your shoe size? Yeah, my shoe size is size 18. You've seen them. I've seen them, but I didn't realize they're a fucking size 18. Man, that sucks. Size 18. <laughs> Jesus. My socks would, like, my long socks would barely fit over your feet. Jesus Christ. Dude, you, you've commented about how big my feet were. It's I, never I, any I, less shocking, Josh. Josh, the difference is seeing it and then knowing the exact number. It's it's like saying like a jar of candy. I'm like, oh, it's that's a lot of fucking candy in that jar. And then someone saying, oh, there's fourteen hundred pieces of candy in that jar, and going, holy shit, that's a lot of fucking candy. That's a lot of foot, Josh. So yeah, it, it can be difficult to get socks in my size. I feel like later I might have a drink and just search out like websites for like big feet socks or something. <laughs> <laughs> Jo- and then Bill stumbles up, stumbles on the weirdest fetish. Oh, he has ever you got to skirt that one pretty close. But I, I'm willing to uh, get a little little heat from the fire if it if it means Josh can get some nice argyle size 19. So, anyways, what do we hope are in our stockings? <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ! I said socks. That's what I was hoping for. Yeah. Let's move on back to this. Oh, we got to cut like 20 minutes off the top of this thing. It's just going to bleed right into these questions. You know what? I know what I want. I want knee pills. What? Knee pills. The fuck are knee pills? Because my knees hurt from running. What are knee pills? Things that make my knees don't hurt when I run. You mean like opiates? You're hoping for dope? Yes. 
Oh yeah, I want I want I want the hard shit. <laughs> huh. Hey Josh, I found some uh men's big and tall diabetic non binding crew socks. Oh, Jesus. It's a three pack. They help with my circulation dicks. Seventeen bucks. Uh, that would be the thing. I probably would have less dress socks if I had to pay that much for more a three for pack. Uh, no, Bill, these aren't even dress socks. These are just normal socks. Huh. Seventeen bucks for a three pack. <laughs> That's absurd. Kyle, as to your answer, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a video from Mitchell and Webb later that just is perfect for what you just said. But Josh, what do you want in your stocking? <laughs> Because if it's stress socks, I think I know a couple guys that might help. I want earmuffs so I don't have to listen to anybody anymore. (laughs) Earmuffs. It's it's not cold, Josh. It's not cold, remember? I'm not cold. I just... I just don't want to listen to you anymore. There's something about the idea of you walking around in, like, sub-zero temperatures in shorts and flip-flops and, like, your fucking (laughs) Mario shirt with earmuffs. Like, it just completes the whole thing. (laughs) I actually don't have a Mario shirt. You're though. like that guy from Something About Mary. Frank's in peace. Frank's in peace. Well, the secret's out. He wasn't fictional, and this is where he is. Ah, good questions, all. Good Christmas movies, Kyle. I- we're going to make that happen so you can watch that later since there's a party in your basement and you're going to sit with us. I, I, we can all synchronize Santa Claus the movie and watch it together. I, I'm not going down there. It's it's going to be six of Nancy's cousins. Drinking. And then blood view. Fuller House. Yep. We can watch Santa Talking Claus the movie together and it'll be hilarious. I mean, I, one of my favorite things though was when we were getting ready to do the podcast, Kyle, you weren't here yet. And I was going over the questions. I was like, why the fuck are there so many Christmas questions? And I'm like, because it's the fucking season, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't put two and two together. Oh, Jesus. So All I right. know he said we were going to have a shorter show. I think you legitimately have to cut a bunch off the top, Josh. Just go right into the questions. <laughs> so, uh, Bill, what have you been playing? Um, let's see. What do we want to start off with? I think I'm going to start off Make with... It quick. <laughs> I will. Uh, no Man's Sky. I actually acquired that for $9. So any criticisms I have are based off a $9 purchase, not like some of you poor bastards that paid $60 for that thing. Uh, Tony. Yeah, Tony. <laughs> If he does send in a little video or a little audio clip of his rankings of favorite VRs, you can insert that here because it'll be over in three seconds. Um, no Man's Sky. Technically, it's kind of cool. There's planets. I, I played it, what, for maybe four or five hours last Saturday, Josh, give or take? Yep, pretty much. I'm done with it. That's all I, that's all I needed. I, I got off the first planet. I jumped around to a new solar system, and that is pretty much what there is to do the same as you were doing the first 20 minutes if the game would have been 20 bucks i think people some would have enjoyed it and you would have never heard anything about it but at 60 dollars, i would have been fucking furious I, I i completely understand what they were doing and being angry about everyone knows everything about that game that's all i'm really gonna say about it yep did you play it since they released that new patch i played he it, started I, it when they released that. yeah yeah that uh, i waited basically to start it until it had dropped a couple days before that but Kyle, it's it's not like you know in Minecraft you you could go around and you're acquiring materials, but there's materials all over the place, and you just sort of like have a progression and build. Where this is to to fix this component of your ship, you have to find X. And I wandered around for like two hours, unable to find zinc, which is what I needed to get off the fucking planet. Everything was done, and I just there was none to be found. And so I just ended up buying it. I found this trader after two hours, bought it and left the planet. But that's all you're really doing is just aimlessly hoping to find component X so that you can do Y. It, it just, it doesn't have the fun of collecting like a, a game like Minecraft does because the inventory slots are super limited. There, there's not like a wealth of things to build and do. And, you know, if you're wanting to build something, but you don't have the stuff in Minecraft, you're always like, doing other things and building your home and you know there was always distractions where this 
there are no distractions because there's nothing else to do. It's, it's, yeah, maybe in a year, if they added a bunch, I could see it being better, but I'll, I'll never put the disc back in, but oh well. Wow. Yeah. It, that sucks. I'll send it to you if you want to try it. I mean. Oh God, no. It, it, it's just. <laughs> I have, Bill, I have far better open world games to play. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the idea is there, right? The tech yeah. is there. There's the, a lot of good things there. Yeah. It just needs more. And it, it needs something. There's nothing. Right? Yeah. I mean, Minecraft, there's nothing, but you're able to make your own fun because you're always creating stuff and exploring. No. Like, it felt like you were exploring. This is just every planet, even though they're all different, they're all just the same. You're just hunting for one thing to get one thing better, and it's not What, what fun. made Minecraft fun when we first played it was the fact that there was six people on the server and we all fucking dicked around. That's what made it fun. It's not that the game had anything to do. Yeah. Even when the game had things to do, we still didn't do it. Like going <laughs> to the dark world or whatever it was. Yeah, I, I, we never did it. Well, Kyle maybe did, but I sure as hell didn't. Uh, I, I totally did. That's what made but, that game fun was it was that we were all there dicking around together. Kyle, like to put, we, but can, even so, Minecraft is only like 10 bucks when we bought mm -hmm. it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But like if we can all go into no man's sky right and just fly from planet to planet and develop things and fuck around then we would have the same amount of fun that we did in minecraft but, but the thing is we don't actually play together yeah that's in no man's that's, sky no well, that's, that's what problem, i'm saying though man. like kyle to put it in com a, a good comparison so very what in the first half an hour of minecraft once you figure out oh i gotta chop trees to make some rudimentary tools now i can do this you build like the workbench right isn't that basically one of the first things you do so you can craft other shit Right. Imagine if building your first shovel and building your first workbench took four hours. That's fucking absurd. That's what this game is, and everything's like that. Maybe you're lucky and the planet you spawn on would allow you to get off sooner, but the next thing, it's just going to be a random hope for the best thing, and it it's just not fun at all. I feel bad for those guys, but it's just not at all yeah that's a good comparison like the things that you do right away in minecraft to basically open it all up to you so you can do all kinds of cool shit takes hours and there is no building like, a home or castle there, there's just nothing you're just aimlessly walking around the workbench is literally the first two minutes of gameplay yeah it takes two hours basically to get to that point and then you can't do anything with it <sighs> that's fucking that no no, and the no, inventory is that. so small. I mean, if you were just Ugh. acquiring all this shit aimlessly, you know, say you had a cargo hold in your ship that you just sent all this stuff to so that when you did get plans, you could build a bunch of cool... There's none of that. Like, you constantly have to just leave shit lay around because, A, you don't know what any of this stuff is even for. There's nothing to do with it. But, oh, yeah, it's... No, just a big no. Don't... Sadly, maybe in a year you can reevaluate if people should try it, but... Even at the nine dollars I paid, you know, I got my entertainment's value that day. But if I had paid sixty bucks, I probably would have been one of those people on Steam wanting a refund. It's 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 not great. So, <clears throat> um, finished Titanfall two. No one wants to hear about that, but that game's pretty fun. The I, I enjoyed the the single player, Josh. It's good. It's good stuff. So, Bill, uh, all the things you said. If I were to acquire that on like a really good sale. Should I get it? Yeah. If you can get it for like 15, 20 bucks, I think you could have fun in the campaign. It's a, it's a good time. Okay. I mean, today okay. when I was testing out my new sub, I replayed just one mech level for no reason other than it's just awesome running around in a mech having giant fights and loud and crazy stuff. It's fun. Okay. Because I, I enjoy those things. I'm thoroughly. I'm toying with replaying it on a harder difficulty because the, the single player... You not in you know what stuff that uh, that that speaks volumes, Bill. Yeah, that you're willing to replay it at a higher difficulty. Yeah, because the normal was maybe a bit too easy, and I think if I amped it up a little bit, I'd have to hide it and use the cloak a lot more and take a little bit more time. I, I see the mech areas being frustrating at a harder difficulty, where the rest would be more fun. But I'd be willing to sit through the the difficulty of the mech and boss battles just because I think replaying those sections tough would be a good time yeah it's 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 a solid game it, it's i i wish more people had bought and played it 
Uh, other than that, I've been sinking a fair amount of time into Deus Ex, and I totally will eat my plate of crow. Really? I, I, I have enjoyed pretty much everything I've been doing in there. I, I'm exploring every square inch of every level. It plays so much better than the first one. Things just seem to work. It doesn't feel stiff and shitty. Like, I... The way you can move from cover to cover and navigate levels is so fucking much better. It's 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 the game the last one should have been. How, how far along in the story are you? Um, what is the last thing that I I did all I did a lot of side stuff, so I don't know the main story. I just talked to the uh, the department head ish guy, and I just met the other guy in the uh, the helicopter, and he dropped me off in the new zone. And I figured that was a good spot to stop last week. Oh, like the the let's augment only city. Yeah, we'll say like the slums. I think that's Golem. Yeah, that, Golem. that's probably accurate. Which the the level design seemed it was really pretty. But yeah, that's right where I stopped. It was a good spot to to quit for the weekend. But yeah, I, I I'm right. enjoying it thoroughly. I mean, putting all my points early into hacking, so that's not a nuisance. So basically, I can get into anything everywhere all the time is a is a huge perk, and yeah, I, I I'm enjoying I'm enjoying it quite a bit. I, I'll probably press keep for twenty bucks from gameplay soon enough. Just finish it slowly. It's fun. I like it. That that warms my heart, Bill. That you you finally like a Deus Ex game. Yeah, it, it plays so much because it's the other one just was shitty i mean if you go into an area and you're not playing stealth and you're just trying to play combat it's not great it's not a great shooter but that's not what you're supposed to be doing right so the the stealth side of things is so much better that Mm -hmm. it's it's genuinely enjoyable yeah it's 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 good i don't know is there dlc for that game there there is Mm -hmm. so you play since I pre-ordered it, I get a uh, there's like a little mission beforehand that I've actually yet to play, hmm. and then um, th- there are other missions that you play, I guess, that will tie into the first Deus Ex game. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I haven't hit a boss battle yet, so I mean, there is still the chance that the there's game only, goes south. Do, there's only one. There's only one boss battle, <laughs> and it's at the very end, and it's very unsatisfying that's fine <laughs> i mean i think that the city is a little bit confusing to navigate i i don't necessarily love that there's things like it yeah that there's there, there's two zones yeah so there's a fucking loading time in between going like essentially crossing a river yeah i thought that was really fucking stupid there's things like that that i could get nitpicky about but overall i it's what i wanted these games to be i think and it's it's fun it, Did you play the first day of sex? Like way, way back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Uh, okay. I never played those. Um, outside of that, I started Doom, but we're not going to talk about that till next time. I'm going to probably play some here later tonight and maybe some tomorrow, but I'm going to pick away at that. Now that I have a uh, speakers hooked back up to my office here, I can play that with the loud heavy metal music. And what I've played of it thus far, it seems pretty promising. It's pretty kick ass. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, that's it for me. All right, Kyle. All right, so since Bill graciously decided to play Deus Ex, I started (laughs) playing The Witcher 3. Yes! You're splitting time with Final Fantasies, and I have to say it is... Dude, just fucking walk all over my reveal, whatever. No, sorry. Seriously. Dick. Sorry. Cut that out. All right. Yeah, it's, uh, I would have, you know, just leave it in. Fuck it. So, uh, I finally decided to get past the initial five minutes of The Witcher 3 and play the game. <laughs> like, the first time I played it, I raced down the tower with Siri, and on my the my, my computer was just like, no, fuck this, I, I can't do this, what are you doing? This is too much, Kyle! This is too much for me. So I, I let it I, I let it be and I played it again on Nancy's computer, which handles it marvelously. Mm-hmm. Seven seventy should do just fine with it. When, when are we going to design you a new machine? <sighs> Probably next year, honestly. 
I'll probably get one of those new uh, 10 whatever GTXs when they're cheap. Yeah, I'm waiting for a 1080 Ti. So until the Ti's are out. I mean, I, yeah. I have the money. I save money all year for that, and they're not out yet. But that's what I'll jump to. I'll probably jump to that next year. Yeah. Me too. Um. So what do you think of but, The Witcher, Kyle? Because you're, you're in the tutorial map, we'll say. So I like I did all I did most I did all the story stuff. So I I the last thing I did is I killed the Griffin. Mm-hmm. That is the very last thing, and I see all these other question marks on the map, and I really want to fucking explore it because holy shit, the Witcher's really good at just fucking wander around. Here's things that might be interesting. Just do it. Yep. yep. And when you see the amount of those things in the real map you'll have like an oh shit moment because there's so much to explore that you don't really have a path or plan. You just at some point just kind of pick a direction and see what happens. What do I stumble on in this area? Yeah. It's, it's like replaying a better Skyrim in my opinion. Kind of. Yeah. Just it's, Oh, here's a chest. Here's way better fucking (laughs) equipment than you had. All right, here's another location. Kill these fucking weird sea monsters. All right. The, now you have their brain and you can craft potions and shit. The drowners. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, that area is basically so you can learn combat a little bit, learn how mission structure works, learn how to navigate with the horse and some of the little bits of crafting and whatnot. And it, it basically then just opens up this door and says... There's like a point of interest, like a single mission you have, but you're set in this big open area and it's just kind of, well, have fun. Good luck. And it's great. I, I'm i very much looking forward to playing this on my winter break. And I look forward to hearing about it. Like the two weeks where I just don't do shit. Mm-hmm. Except well, for the honeydew list. Yeah, I was going to say, except for your chore list. You'll have a chore list during the day, but, you know, you have plenty yeah. of time at night. Ooh. Yeah. So th- but, so I played that, and then right when I, essentially right when I killed the Griffin, uh, Final Fantasy Fifteen dropped. So I had that on download, so I got that, and... That's so weird. I... I don't know how I feel about this game. Like you didn't play thirteen at all, right? No, no. I I got I played thirteen for twenty hours up until I got to the open area part, hmm. and then I was like, "Nah, I've had enough of this game." It's weird. I don't recall you playing thirteen. Yeah, no. I played it. I played it. I played it. I vaguely remember the story. But that's about it. I think maybe I was close to the open world area in that game. I can't remember if I got there or not. Like, I killed the Pope, I think? <laughs> or I fought the Pope? I don't know. So anyway, yeah. It's weird. Yeah. So, the, like, the very first thing is, I guess they try to start you in media res, and you're the Noctis, the dude you play as, is old and all your your team members are, start out as old and you're fighting who I'm assuming is Ifrit just because it's like this old guy in a chair snapping his fingers causing fires and I'm like oh that's Ifrit and then it's like alright now you're talking to your dad and your dad's like alright go marry your wife <laughs> or your fiance and you're like alright we're gonna go meet my fiance and then it's you and your friends, question mark, riding in a car. <laughs> your crew. Your posse. Yep. So the game is fucking gorgeous. Yeah, I'll, I'll it give is it that. one of the prettiest games I have ever seen. Well, it took long enough. It fucking probably should be. Yeah. But, I mean, is it just the you playing this or is, is Nancy playing this too? So the I thought that Nancy and I would just pass the controller as we got bored, but Nancy's like, "Man, I'm gonna sit this one out." Wow, yeah, that, that says more the, than the, anything else. That was the my my pretty much the same thing. The combat is really fucking confusing. Mm. So it's like you're playing an MMO, 
and you're on uh like you have a party except you don't control the other three people you play as and there's all of these bonuses and other things that add up that you have no control over that just happen it's like oh you and shooty mcgee over there are both behind the target and you get a 1.5 percent in or 1.5 times damage just because you guys are lined up at this one particular point hmm. and the the combat's just super confusing, no, and I don't like it. I mean, the combat, essentially, Kyle, it's not so much like an MMO. It's an open-world game with RPG terms in Devil May Cry slash God of War combat. <laughs> essentially, is what it is. Yeah, but I don't I don't like that combat. Yeah. It's not... I, I like my turn-based... You like traditional you JRPG. Think, yeah, like, I like my turn-based strategy you gotta think of your move combat yeah. not like all right i'm gonna mash the fucking circle right that's what and, i like as well and what? maneuver behind the guy so i could do slightly more damage meanwhile i'm gonna press the like the trigger and tell my friends to do something or teleport yeah and then there's like that whole teleport <clears throat> mechanic which i think is really fucking stupid all right, I'm going to teleport away from combat and catch my breath and recover all of my HP and mana I mean, or MP. Essentially, it's not a JRPG anymore. It's just a typical action RPG. Yeah, that's that's what it's uh, Final Fantasy has evolved is evolving into. But like all of my complaints aside, I think for the most part, I I like the draw of the characters. Even though I've only I've only played like six hours of the game, and most of that time's been that time has been spent driving around, bullshitting, and camping out. Has have literally camping out? Yeah, literally camping out. Have they gotten annoying or boring at this point? No, they? they haven't. So, for the six hours that I've played, there's been no repetitive dialogue. There has been no. Um, I guess eh, I was going to loop back in repetitive dialogue, but it's it's all Square Enix has very smartly programmed the way that that your friends slash your guardsmen interact with you, mm -hmm. and each one has like their own personality, and they've done a good enough job to eliminate the like stupid annoying aspect of the, the like your characters. Hmm. So I I'm really looking forward to continuing playing with these people and just seeing what happens. That's weird. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Like I fucking hate the combat and I think the story is weird, but I just want to keep going just to see what happens. Mm. Just cuz I like driving in cars with my like with, with these guys. With, you. <laughs> with with my bros. With my bros. Listen right. to old Final Fantasy music over the radio. Yeah. Like like it does have I guess like Some what you're stuff. saying though in a way is is it has a weird charm to it, right? Like yeah, the gameplay is pretty decent. It's gorgeous. It's a, and it just has it, a charm. It's confusing. Like I don't like I don't know what to do. Not sure if want to put dick in. Like I don't know if I want to like it was weird like when I first started out, I'm like, "Oh, this is fucking stupid." But like as I got more and more into it, I'm like all right, I can see where they're going with this. Yeah. Sort of. The, Except uh, this combat's fucking stupid, but I like... I just like exploring with my friends. Now, see, if I recall, they're using the same combat system for the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Oh. Or similar, at least. Huh. <laughs> like, if you want a traditional one, then you would want, like, World of Final Fantasy. You just keep pressing that on him. He's got two games he's playing with that name. He doesn't need a third, Josh. No, I'm just saying, like, if he wanted the traditional <laughs> combat style, mm. then that has it versus this is God of War in Final Fantasy. Yeah, it's... I don't, like, I don't like just fucking going into combat and mashing a single button. Like, even though as essentially the original Final Fantasy is you just go and you, you just hit A... But there's a choice. It's, all right, I'm fighting skeletons, so I could either do fire or I could do, like, holy magic, which will hurt them. This is just, all right, 
attack. The dude with the the dude with the glasses says that um guns do more damage, so I'm going to switch to my gun and I'm going to shoot them. Except it's just you running around to the back and just shooting them in the ass with a gun. <laughs> I think I, I was Josh and I had talked about it a little bit, maybe you were there, and I said I would probably rent this game. And then I watched that quick look from Giant Bomb that Josh had, had put in there. And I think the thing that got me is they came across some large beast, we'll say. It doesn't matter. And they're they're fighting it and they're fighting it and it's down to like a quarter he's got they've knocked off like a quarter health. And the guy's like, We'll jump to a different save. This'll this will probably take like another 10, 12 minutes to finish off and it's I, I just don't like those set of games where you have to sit there and hammer on a boss for 12 minutes where you're just doing the same thing for 10, yeah, 12 minutes. That's just not my style of play. He was also admittedly underleveled to do that. S- but still, like, it's just not – it's just not my kind of thing. That's the other thing that I liked is it. it's – they make it squ- – like, the way Square has done it is – I don't know, I guess true to life, it's you get a bonus if you can't, like, if you... So there's night and day cycles in this game. And you get bonuses to your stats if you eat. And food will essentially last one game day. So it encourages you to camp out every night to make new food to, like, pump up your stats. But that's also the way that you level up your characters and the more you camp out and the more shit you do in the game the more ability points that you get that you can spend to I guess grant new abilities because it has a similar I guess like a similar thing to Final Fantasy X's ability sphere or Final Fantasy XII's like weird grid system hmm so it's, I don't know, I. it's a weird game, and I I don't know how I like, feel about it, it but I want to keep Final playing Fantasy. it. Or at least not the numbered one. Would that make you yeah, feel it, better it, if it was called whatever it was originally called? Yeah, if it, you know what? This feels like um, Silent Hill The Room. Yeah, it's, it's an option. This should have been a different game, but they put it under Final Fantasy in order to sell titles. No, it was a different game. Games. It was Final Fantasy thirteen Versus. This is what and, Versus was. Yeah, the, like even that, it doesn't make sense. But hearing about what they've done, it's like, all right, they needed to put out this game since it's been 10 years or whatever. At the end of the day, Nomura has to go. He's ruining Final Fantasy. His character design is atrocious. His stories are terrible. Yeah, I'm six hours into the game, and I don't know what the fuck is going on. Yeah. Nomura's the worst. I mean, that, when you said story earlier, I was going to say, is there even a story yet? Like, the only thing I know is I'm going to some town to marry my fiance. Six hours in, Yeah, I, I'm trying to compare it to other Final Fantasies, and seven, six hours in, you might have just gotten out of Midgar. I know at least in 10 you would have met Seymour and had some pretty interesting interactions already. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not playing this game. 9 you would have you would have got you you would have finally gotten like the yeah, and all the other final like the the later release Final Fantasy you would have gotten greater hints towards the the main the actual story, like the main conflict and this with all the side quests I've done and stuff like that, it's I don't. I still don't know shit. I think at this point in Lost Odyssey, you would have known who Gorgonzola was. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah. I, we'll no. we'll see how you feel about it as you keep going. I'm, I'm interested yeah. to see for sure. Like honestly, like, I, I'm I'm interested in the game. I want to see where it goes, but it's I don't like the combat. For the, yeah, well, I was about to say for the most part, everything seems really positive except for. Slow story and terrible combat. So the two things that one carries the entire game, the other one's the thing you do all the time. Yeah, that's, we'll see how you stick with that. I, mean, I have a feeling you're going to cross the line and you'll have to finish it out of spite. The only game that I've finished out of spite that I can <clears throat> recall is Tales of Symphonia. <laughs> I was waiting for that. Yeah. All right. Is that all you have, Kyle? Yeah, that's all I've got. I I just 
I just played two massive fucking games. Yeah. Or at least I, I at least I hope Final Fantasy Fifteen is massive. I think I'm gonna skip one of my games to kind of speed this up because this is end up being a lot longer than I wanted. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, yeah. Save the middle one, unless that's no. that's your main one. So I started uh, Watch Dogs two a few weeks ago. I think actually like right after we recorded the last episode, like Thanksgiving ish, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Because I think I recall you playing it. Yeah. I, yeah, I think I started actually. I was playing it during the last episode. I just didn't want to talk about it yet. Uh, and it actually started out like it was a pretty good game. Like I, I felt pretty good about it early on. Like it runs really, really well. It looks pretty good for an open world game. Like there's lots of like when you're in a city, there's lots of cars driving around and people walking around and sure different things happening which is what you want to see in an open world game right like it's a actual world and the fact that it takes place in real california like los angeles and san francisco and stuff like that like you can drive to the actual ubisoft studio huh <laughs> uh which yeah, one like, in uh montreal or quebec no the one in california oh <laughs> where i said where it takes at? place in san francisco it's okay yeah. Kyle. It's okay, but like you can you can drive to Oakland in it. Um, Why would you want to go to Oakland? You know to hack things, Kyle. Your your watchdog. How? Oh. What is what, what what does a watchdog do? So what <laughs> watchdog is the original <laughs> game. I I don't really know much about the original. I didn't really play it. I know Bill did, but like it was a it was a, as far as I know, it was a game that took itself too seriously about a guy who was trying to like under underthrow the government or some shit, right? No, not really at all. I don't even remember it. It was nothing that grand. Wait, wait, wait. Bill, I want to know. In the original Watch Dogs, was the phrase, jet fuel can't melt steel beams, uttered? No, nothing like that. Oh. It, I don't even remember much from the story. There was a lot of it. I, the thing I remember above all else is that this person who was maybe being framed for something or something along those lines probably shouldn't be going around murdering as many people as you are <laughs> and it just it didn't exactly make sense but yeah i don't remember much of it i, I mean i finished the game i don't really remember much so it, in Watch Dogs 2 it, you are a, a guy that ends up getting brought into a hacker group you are a hacker amongst like four other people that form this group called dead sec and uh <laughs> So basically, you're just sent on missions to try to take down this company that built software that every city is using for, like, surveillance of people and all this other shit. So you want to take them down. <clears throat> and so basically every mission is just break into this building and try to get the software and blah, blah, blah. And so <laughs> there's cool little toys in the game like at, that you're having fun with at first. Stuff like uh, you get like a little drone that you can fly around and like hit people in the head with, or just, like half the time your your character isn't even going into the buildings that you're hacking. Like you're sending a drone in, so it's kind of cool trying to sneak that through without getting seen. Yeah, that sounds okay. Uh, and then I just also... read the synopsis of the first game, and that is the dumbest fucking story I've ever heard. It, of. it wasn't great, Kyle. I don't honestly remember it at all. I remember some of the characters and like my secret base, but it's not good. Sorry, Josh. You al you also get a little RC car that you can take in as well. That's kind of cool. Uh, yeah, I guess. But uh, I don't know. It, it just it started out where like every mission that you do is almost identical to the last one that you just did, except for in a different part of California. Half the time, you're running around buildings trying to find ways to get on top of them, like finding scissor lifts or something like that that you can hack to lift up. Yeah, there was a lot of that, that in the first one, yeah. Well, that's pretty much every mission on this one. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got against scissor lifts? Nothing at all, but the fact that they're all over They California. remind me of scissoring. Uh... Yes. Scissor me timbers. I mean, they're uh, an integral part of making America great again, Josh. I don't. You should really watch yourself. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Just overall, like at first, like some of the characters were cool. There's one that I particularly find funny. Other than that, the rest of the the 
the crew is all pretty bland and boring. It has a couple cool aspects. You 3D print your own weapons. <laughs> huh. But you have to still pay like 30 grand for them. <laughs> Jesus. That, that doesn't make sense. Which completely defeats the purpose of 3D printing your own weapons. But people like 3D printers, Josh. We need it in there. Yeah. It's hip is what it is. A big part of the game is going to uh, like known buildings and, and landmarks and taking selfies. Ugh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny that's where it started to I fall apart for that you isn't Wind it Waker. that is kind of a big part of it yeah that's where it started falling apart for josh you know what's weird too like one of the things that i noticed is uh like in other open world games like say infamous or grand theft auto and these other games are like you can get in the vehicles and then drive up to a mission and then get out and start the mission and when you're done that cutscene of it explaining what you need to do you would get back in that same car and then go to the mission. When you get out of the cutscene in this game, the car that you just got on, out of is gone. It's like it resets the world. That chaps That's your, frustrating. Yeah, that does chap your and ass. also really dumb. It's weird, though. Like, I don't know. Because, like, I found this the go-kart that I really love driving around the city for some reason. And then I start a mission, and then my go-kart's gone. I can just so see then you have to go find your new go kart. <laughs> I could just see you tweeting Ubisoft. Where'd my go kart go, dicks? But isn't that weird? Like in this day and age, we don't have the fucking memory in these consoles to leave a car there. Yeah. You know what that is? That's bad programming, Josh. I know what it is, fuckface. But still, what I'm saying is, it's dumb. Don't call me fuckface, dick bag. <laughs> Oh. I had to listen to you fucking complaining about playing God of War, right? I never played God of War, asshole. It's you did. It's God, of, Final God of Fantasy Final Chapter, Josh. 15. It's been a lot of chapters. <laughs> yeah, I mean, overall. It, Was the combat really fun? Cool. Is, is it at least fun to play? I mean, you played it enough to it had to be a little fun. No, I would say <laughs> the combat. Really? The combat is kind of insufferable. Like. It's just a cover based thing, right? Ish. Ugh. So like you you can only take a couple of hits, that's it. Really? Before you are dropped. Yeah, like you can't take really anything. I'm actually okay with that, I think. The gunplay is terrible. In fact, half the time I didn't even use the gun, I just used a taser. Yeah, I'm not okay with that. Um There are like kinda like in, in God of Fan- Fantasy fifteen you can, uh, it has like a skill tree for your character and stuff. And you know, so, you know, Josh, if, if you want to use the, uh, stun gun instead of the gun, you could just play Deus Ex. <laughs> I'm never going to do that, Kyle. But anyway, so it has a skill tree, and one of the upgrades is like you can call in rival gangs to come in and fight the people that you're trying to, like, say, if I'm get, going into a restricted area, I can hack one of the people in there. And make it seem like they attacked a gang, and then the gang will come in and like go after everybody. Cool. So I'll just do that to have the gang clear out the entire area before I actually even go in. It's kind of neat, right? But it gets boring waiting fifteen minutes every time because <laughs> you yeah. don't want to do the actual combat. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It, it's pretty. It runs well. Like it's something that I think that I'll load up again on a boring day. But it's not a game that I can see myself like wanting to play through. I'll buy it cheap like I did the other one and play it for a while. I don't have any interest in paying $60 for it, though. Yeah. Are you, are you going to hang out with your buddy Iraq? <laughs> or uh, shut off someone's pacemaker? Yeah, there's a lot of hacking in this, Kyle. A lot of hacking. One of the, uh, one of the side missions is there's a guy who's going around and put a virus in everybody's phone is that whenever you text somebody it just says brains like a zombie uh, okay wow har har so they'd be like what do you want for dinner tonight and then the guy would brains. respond with brains yeah yeah nope I'm good yeah so that is Watch Dogs 2 I don't know uh, after that I was given the gift of uh, Pokemon Moon look at <laughs> you why are you laughing, Kyle? It's just funny because we're like, oh, you're going to pick the fucking cat. And you're like, I'm not picking the cat. 
<laughs> and then he picked the cat. <laughs> it's a fire kitty. It's a dark fire kitty, Josh. It's its name is Litten. Litten. Look at yourself. I mean, I've always had a weird become. I've always had a weird affinity with the Pokemon games. I've never really played through them. Uh I've played a bunch of them though, like uh I don't remember which ones, but <laughs> I didn't honestly. I'd, the only one that I played through a lot was uh, Blue. Yeah, and for me, like right now, I'm kind of feeling like a classic, classic but yet basic RPG, which is kind of what a Pokemon game is. No, Pokemon is a rock paper scissors game. Sure. Yeah, and I'm kind of feeling that right now, and I haven't really played one since it kind of went 3D. So it's weird running around like an actual town with like a char- like a actual 3D character rather than a top-down view. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I, I played, what was the last one that was in 3D? Like X and Y, I think it was. Mm-hmm. I had that. There was, something, there was something that came after X and Y. It was like black, black and, and white. white too. Yeah. So I, I bought X or y, or y, one of them, and I played like five minutes of it and then never went back. <laughs> And then so somebody gave me the uh, moon for a gift, and I figured I would play a bunch of it, and I'm actually really enjoying it. Uh, really? Yeah, I'm actually really, really enjoying it. Huh. I mean, there are some aspects of it that really aggravate the shit out of me. <laughs> it has a weird, like, anime-ish story to it. Uh, it's a JRPG, Josh, essentially. Yeah. It's going to yeah. have a weird, dumb story to it. But this one is like... You can't really skip certain parts of it, and you have to sit there and just keep mashing A to let the text go. There's this one girl, I can't remember her name, but she has a a rare Pokemon with her that likes to escape, and you'll constantly have to find it. And every time that she comes across on the screen, you know you're going to lose 10 minutes of your life. <laughs> uh. And then once she's gone, the game is great again. So... <laughs> Fuck this lady and her stupid fucking Pokemon. Yep. But for the most part, I'm I'm genuinely having a good time with it. Uh, my Litten is now the next stage. I think it's like, I don't remember what it's called, but he's level 28 now. Oh shit! A couple more levels and he'll uh, he'll upgrade to the new the next level. Yep. Yep. Uh, I think I've done pretty much all the trial. I think this game is broken up into four islands. Because it takes place technically in, like, Hawaii. Oh, that's weird, since all of the other Pokemon games are based off of all the prefectures in Japan. Yeah. Like, everybody says Aloha in this. That's weird. Hmm. It's too it's too happy. So, uh, uh, Bill, a prefecture in Japan is essentially a state. Okay. So, each, each Pokemon game was based off of a, a different state in Japan. Hmm. That's kind of neat. Didn't know that. Yeah. So, like, if you if you were to look at the the map, it would look identical to like Connecticut or New Hampshire or Florida or something like that. Interesting. Yeah, I, there's some new moves in this too. I don't know if it was in any of the older ones, Kyle. Like a, a Z attack or whatever the fuck it is. No, that's that's new. Yeah. So, like, as you complete what's now trials, they're no longer gyms, but they're trials. That's dumb. You get. <laughs> You get a special attack from the gym leader that, like, gives them one super power, basically. One special attack that is way overpowered. And so you can... they got... So are there still, like, HMs in this game? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there are. Hidden machines? Yep. But, like, this is, like, a one time that, like, really beefs up your... Like, your Pokemon glows gold when you use it. Like, uh, the, the one I gave to my Litten actually is a fire attack that I got from the fire trial dude thing. And he, uh, it basically is like using meteor from final fantasy seven. Like it just launches a giant fireball at the Pokemon <laughs> that goes into the earth. Yeah. You, you destroy two planets upon using it. Yeah, pretty much. And it's just funny to see an attack like that in Pokemon. And did it have something like in the other ones where like Pokemon will call in other ones to help them? Like a tag team? No. Yeah, so like, like while you're beating the shit out of one, like rather than attack you, it calls in for assistance and then another one shows up. No, the only one that I played was like Pearl or Silver or Sapphire. 
some jewel. Well, or some precious <laughs> stone or something like that. Well, well, that's new to me then too, and it's kind of annoying. But I mean, you get more experience for it, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, that, overall, that seems frustrating. But can you reciprocate stupid. that and call one in yourself? No. Oh. Yeah, that's really stupid. Then I mean, it's actually like I said, it's not too bad though because. For each one that you kill, like, I actually got into a weird loop where one kept calling in some, another helper. Like, they won't call in more than, there won't be more than two at one time, right? So you'll have the main one that you're fighting and then the one, the helper. And if you kill the main one, then the helper will call somebody in. So that went on for, like, five minutes, and I basically got, like, triple experience out of that one fight. Yeah, but how long did that fight last? Mm, like, five minutes. Yeah, Pokemon games are... If if you can't kill your opponent in two moves, you've failed. Yeah, but I'm playing at home. I'm not really on the road. I don't really care. You're playing Pokemon wrong, Josh. Jesus Christ, Kyle. I don't have my Switch yet. <laughs> Ugh. Confirmed. I'm getting a Switch on launch. Anyway. Yes, yeah, so am I. <laughs> really? Yeah. Huh. Interesting. So, anyway, like, uh, I'm really, really enjoying it. Uh, Kyle, if you have a means of playing it, I would definitely recommend it to you. I think you would genuinely like it. It does seem like a a big upgrade in Pokemon that you might actually enjoy. I don't know, Josh. I like my shitty, shitty Game Boy version. That's fine. I'm, I'm just saying that. That is I, essentially a glorified rock, paper, scissors game. I think that you would genuinely like this. And it's good looking. I mean, you should have got the uh, 3DS when it was $99. And that fucking chair. Hey, I'd rather sit in comfort than play a game. Uh, oh, lumbar support, Josh. It's so good. And you you can do the trading online and stuff like that, which is fun. So there's there's a lot of cool things about this game. I'm very happy with it, and I'm glad that I actually got Moon because I guess the difference between Sun and Moon is like when it's light time here, it's dark in the game for me, and when it's dark here, it's light in the game for me. Weird. So since I'm playing during the day, or I'm I'm since I work during the day and I get out at night. It's I'm when I'm playing the game. It's now sunny, which is actually nice for me. Huh, that is weird. Cause I remember that was a big complaint with you when you played uh, Animal Crossing. Yeah. Yeah, because I had odd hours then, and it was basically like always night. So I'm playing Pokemon Moon. So like I said, when when it's nighttime here, it's daytime in the game for me, which I I like. And the person who uh, gifted me the game, they have sun. So when it's nighttime here, it's no one's. It's the other way. <laughs> ah, I, I I didn't realize that the person who gifted it to you also had a uh, 3ds. Yes. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> what? Nothing. You can't see it, but I'm waggling my eyebrows furiously. <laughs> what? <laughs> nothing. Nothing, Josh. Nothing. Nothing. Tralala. <laughs> So, anyways, I'll, I'll hold off on the uh, my other game, which is another 3DS game because I've been playing a lot of 3DS lately. Right, Kyle? I I wouldn't know, Josh. I thought you're several hours away from me. I hate you. Why do you hate me? So why don't you tell them how they can get in contact with us if they search? No, 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 no. Before you, why do why do you hate me? Because I hate you. Why? What did fucking, I do to you? I'm gonna fucking kill you. Why? I'm going to kill you. That, that's not very nice, Josh. I'm going to put my size 18 shoe up your ass. Uh, I do not like that. My ass cannot support a size 18 shoe. <laughs> anyway, Josh, <laughs> you can contact us on Twitter. You can get Josh at Nessero. You can get me at KR Dumon, Bill at Billy Bill Black, or the podcast at Critical Strike. You can leave us a voicemail at 909C Strike or 909-278-7453 or shoot us an email at cstrikepodcast at gmail.com. And hopefully for the next episode we will have uh, our Game of the Year stuff set. Holy shit, I drank a lot of Jameson. In quotes, <laughs> since we didn't play a whole lot this year, so we're probably going to dip into uh, 2015. 2015. Yeah, which, I mean, we didn't do one last year anyways, so... I kind of wanted to throw in some of the games from last year that we played. Also, like you said, we didn't play shit this year. So. Yeah. Well, there wasn't really shit to play this year. I have a feeling yeah. that conversation is going to come up. Yeah, probably. Yeah. All right. Well, we will see everybody in a couple weeks. All right. Yay. 
Bye, people.